Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's good to see you all. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being here at this session, the Future of Arctic Science Collaboration. My name is Henry Burgess. I am the head of the UK's Arctic office, and I also have the great pleasure in being the president of the International Arctic Science Committee, IASC. Um, we have six fantastic speakers for you here today uh, with enormous amounts of experience, but also power and responsibility. Uh, so we are very keen to have questions uh, as part of our, part of our session. Uh, so we're blessed to have our speakers uh, and look forward to hearing what they are going to say. Um, Arctic science has been discussed uh, a lot at uh, this uh, uh, Arctic Circle Forum, but equally at the Arctic Circle Assembly in Reykjavik over many years. Uh, and we're very grateful to the Arctic Circle uh, Secretariat and Chairman Grimson for providing space for that discussion, uh, and also to the Sasakawa Peace Foundation uh, and other local hosts and partners for their support for this event. Um, when we think about Arctic science and collaboration, we think about um, the Arctic Council, we think about the new ships that are being created, the icebreakers, uh, we think about the importance of long-term observations and monitoring, uh, and we particularly think about the opportunities created by international cooperation. So many of the really big initiatives that have happened in the Arctic recently, Mosaic, for example, uh, have relied very heavily on international collaboration. So we're going to hear from each speaker in turn. Uh, we've invited them to speak for five minutes uh, each, and then we will have some discussion as a panel. Uh, but very much, we want to hear your questions. Uh, so as you think of questions during the, during the discussion, please, to, please hold on to those, uh, and we will come to you at the end. In terms of preparing for the session, uh, we invited each of the speakers to think about uh, a range of issues uh, and to pick some of those to focus their, their thoughts and uh, reflections. So we thought about what lessons we can learn from international collaboration in science uh, in the past. How can we learn those lessons uh, and bring those forward to the future? We thought about what some of the priorities would be for Arctic science into the future for collaboration. Um, we thought about some of the new opportunities that there are, the new ice-breaking vessels, uh, the commitment of many countries, including Japan, uh, to share their new vessel uh, on an international basis. We know there are things like the International Conference on Arctic Research Planning, which will set the priorities for Arctic science for the next 10 years. That's underway now. We're thinking about, or there will be, an international polar year in 2032-33, uh, the fifth one of those. And then we've also been thinking about how to make better connections to policymakers. So when we set priorities, when we find opportunities, how do we convey the power of those to the people that can fund it, the people that can take decisions? Um, so I'll invite our first speaker, uh, Hiroyuki Enomoto, uh, who's the Vice, Dege Vice Director General for the National Institute for Polar Research in Japan. Uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So I, uh, I would like to uh, so inform you the uh, so future uh, co collaboration planning. And as uh, Henry introduced, International co Conference on Arctic Re uh, Research Planning, ICARP, the in short, is, uh, on, uh, is uh, under discussion. And the ICAP 4, the fourth ICAP, will be uh, targeting 2025 to 2035. So in, uh, it will come soon, and 10 years uh, planning will be under discussion. And, uh, <coughs> and between 2025 and 2035, IPY, uh, International Polar Year, fourth International Polar, Polar Year, will come uh, 2032 and 33. So ICAP is a, 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 is a, will make some prioritized plan. So it, what is that will be targeting area or something? That is a very, very, very big interest. And uh, 20, uh, in the coming uh, years, 2025, ICAP uh, 4 will uh, publish the, their, their so statement or plan. But we call ICAP 4 process it's uh, uh, very important than uh, maybe more than uh, the, that the document. Uh, starting from last year, the discussion has started. And regarding uh, discussions in, in the IP, 
、ICAP for process、uh, many、uh, it's a international collaboration was already done it's a, under networking and discussion. And finally, we will have a document, but the document itself is a not a big issue. The,、uh, so, collaborating discussion is a, a big, big one. And when we visit the previous ICAP 3 to 1, ICAP 1, so every 10 years, ICAP was uh, uh, published. And ICAP 1 is a, a 1995, ICAP 2 is a 2005, and ICAP 3 was 2015. Can you imagine what was the time in ICAP 1, 2, 3? ICAP 1, 1995 is before the Act Council establishment. And、uh, I ask already、uh, existed. But the, a part of the、uh, Act Council's monitoring group was already started. And that time, very early、so、time of the beginning、uh, uh, collaboration in Arctic science, the ICAP 1 uh, may uh, summarize the wish. To the com uh, coming uh, decade. And ICAP 2 is 2005. Just after two years from 2005, IPY is、uh, planned. So uh, they, are, uh, they may be targeting the、uh, coming IPY in 2007. And the third one is、uh, 2015. So the, in the previous uh, discuss, uh, session, uh, uh, interesting discussion was done. So 2013, many Asian countries joined the、uh, Arctic science. And many uh, so, uh, members uh, come, came to Arctic science. And just after that,、uh, ICAP 3 uh, process is done. And that's the science plan, but we recognize in the 2015 discussion. The science is almost continuing, uh, the uh, constant is important. But the targeting audience is changing. So, we in the one and two,、uh, so I have had the science plan for scientists is discussed. But the ICAP 3, the、uh, scientists try to inform their idea to the society or、uh, private sector or something. That is a new, maybe new tendency. And there is a also succeed and fail in the previous ICAP.、Uh, ICAP To、uh, discuss the before the IPY, and I, I already told in the morning session、uh, in IPY year,、uh, I have had eight icebreakers. So many infrastructure、uh, went to、uh, Arctic Ocean, but they,、uh, not well、uh, organized the、uh, co coverage or planning. So, in then that time, the,、uh, after the IPY, sustaining Arctic observing、uh, network is established. That is the function to discuss uh, so, uh, uh, observation coverage,、uh, that uh, arrangement. Then that is an ongoing project. So it's,、uh, in the coming ICAP4、uh, process and、uh, IPY,、uh, next IPY, that、uh, sustaining active observing network will work well and good. Uh, not only the infrastructure, but not only the investment, the planning is a, uh, is a very key issue, and the networking and discussing is, has already started. So, that is my uh, uh, so wish for the coming collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Enemoto san. Thank you for setting the scene so well at the, at the start of our session. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Katrina Gardfeldt,、uh, who's the Director General of the Swedish Polar Research Institute. Katrina, thank you.、Uh, thank you, Henry, and thanks for inviting me to this、um, most impressive、uh, uh, conference here in, in Japan and to this session.、Uh, and thanks also for the questions that you gave us、uh, before and the、um, possibility to reflect on those. Uh, what I have done is、uh, I have ordered my reflections under three areas. And、um, there's a lot of, to be learned from science collaboration in the past. And there's, I'm sure there's a lot of advices to give for the future. But what I will do is,、uh, what I have done is I have distilled it through my,、uh, my own brain. And so this will be a reflection of very much of my own experiences. As a researcher, I'm an environmental scientist, chemistry.、Uh, 
Uh, I've been chasing, chasing mercury and microplastics in the Arctic and in Antarctica and in the Atlantic waters and so on for many years. So I have some experiences from uh, science to policy processes in, for example, the mercury area with the Minamata protocol and so on. So my first area to reflect upon is actually science diplomacy. I know there is very many skilled people in the audience in this subject, but as a scientist, I have um, <coughs> some experiences from science diplomacy. And to my, uh, to, to my experience, I think there is, uh, two very well-pronounced differences in science diplomacy. There is one top-down and there is one bottom-up. Uh, the bottom-up is, of course, where researchers meet and they uh, discuss different topics and they go into research projects and they conduct research and, and they share infrastructure and, and uh, do this uh, re realization of the rea uh, research ID. Uh, in internationally, I think this works very well. And then we have the top-down um, science diplomacy, which of course is extremely important, not at least in these days. And they are often uh, based on national policies. Uh, but what I also has experienced that there is sometimes a lack between this top-down and bottom-up. Sometimes it's said that uh, research to policy doesn't work. And that's why the national policies are not efficiently used, perhaps, in multilateral discussions, which is so important now in the UN, for example, and to put more ambitions and energy betwi between the measures to cut, cut down the CO2 emissions globally. Because if we are worried about the Arctic, this is really the problem. To use the knowledge and the policies that is already in place, but really to cut down the CO2 emissions. I live in the Arctic, and I know, depending on how you count, but the Arctic is becoming warming up some, um, in certain areas four times as quick as the rest of the globe. So we cannot wait for more smooth processes. We shouldn't say this. Uh, I think it's sometimes a bad excuse. So if we care for the Arctic, we should really put down more ambitions to cut down the CO2 emissions. The other area that I would like to reflect on is <coughs> sharing of infrastructure. In Sweden, we have the icebreaker Odin, which is one of the world's most powerful non-nuclear icebreakers. And uh, we use her for science. She's been to the North Pole 10 times. The first time was in September 1999. Uh, and the icebreaker, the Odin, actually became the first non-nuclear powered vessel to reach the North Pole. And uh, almost yearly, we uh, conduct uh, research expeditions uh, with the Odin. Now, in just two months, we will um, go to the Arctic with um, a research expeditions under the theme of uh, chasing atmospheric rivers, which is a metrology um, uh, expedition. We will bring up the Odin to the, to the ice uh, edge uh, in the Arctic and freeze in, and by collaborating with modelers worldwide, uh, we will chase warm atmospheric rivers that are entering the Arctic in the early season and actually it's the starting point of the melting season. On board the Odin, we have around 10 different nations, uh, researchers from around 10 different nations. And it has been some years of planning. Uh, I think this is an excellent example, but there are much more examples. We have the SAS expedition, for example, which, is an, uh, which was an effort in 2020, 2022, and I know it's going to be repeated in 2030. And the uh, Synoptic Arctic Survey invites many vessels to coordinate their research efforts in a very efficient way. And I think this is the way for future, how uh, science uh, could collaborate for future. Uh, my third area is about data. And I'm very happy that open data now is a norm uh, worldwide. We have always worked with open data on board our icebreaker. Odin. You have to sign that the data will be open. 
And now, now uh, when we have this uh, fantastic opportunity to cover also winter season, uh, with, for example, smart cables, we heard about fr from one session, and there is also another uh, initiative uh, th through the North Pole. We will have a lot of uh, data that uh, will be open to the scientific community, and this is so important for the future. Uh, then uh, I will not repeat by the ICAR what we all all the nice things that we have heard. I think this is a fantastic um, uh, initiative for future and for the international polar year, and also the ambitions with early career scientists and transnational access on board icebreaker. And now I think I have had my time. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Katarina. Thank you. Um, it's really always good to hear about the Odin and the practical examples of the work that the Odin does. So thank you, thank you very much indeed. Um, we'll go on to our next speaker now, who is uh, August uh, Ingthorsson, who is the Director General of the Icelandic Centre for Research. Uh, August, thank you, over to you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to participate in this plenary. I feel a little bit out of my depth. Uh, I come from a small country, we don't have any icebreakers, the only infrastructure we have is the island itself with its glaciers and uh, problems to study. And I've not been going like Ambassador uh, Gao to uh, the meetings for the last 10 years. I've only been joining the Arctic Circle in the last, I think, four years. So I decided not to prepare any comments uh, until I've listened to the conversations here yesterday. So allow me to share with you three quotes uh, from uh, what I learned uh, yesterday because I I came with the expectation that I would learn something, and I saw it, so I did. Uh, uh, so the first quote is this, uh, the Arctic science community is the most collaborative research community that exists. I agree with that as an empirical observation, but I also agree with that as an idea. So I think that's a lesson moving forward. We need to have Arctic science as collaborative as uh, possible. And I think this is a positive lesson. You asked us for a positive lesson. I think we've made a great progress in connecting scientific results better, in connecting uh, nations better, and in connecting this better to the policy uh, environment. I agree with comments from the previous session. We need to do a better job of uh, communicating this south of the Arctic Circle but we have made great progress in the last uh, 10 years, and I think that the Arctic Circle is a good example of that. The second quote uh, is from the Icelandic Minister for the Environment, uh, Energy and Climate, who sat on this stage yesterday, scientific cooperation is the most important part of the Arctic Council. Uh, indeed, over 30 years ago, we founded the, the, the IASC, it was, it's more than 30 years ago, it's almost 35 years ago. And I think this is the backbone of political Arctic cooperation, and we need to keep a very strong focus on that. And that means that we need to have everyone on board. Uh, and that has a very you know, political undertone at this moment. We cannot sustain uh, uh, full scientific cooperation when we're missing data from one third of the Arctic area. Uh, and the third quote relates perhaps to that. You asked about the importance of ICAR process. Uh, and somebody said yesterday that the Arctic science community is like a beehive. Uh, and um, I, I like that analogy. And maybe uh, ICARP, uh, the International Conference on Arctic Research Planning, is the hive. That is where we organize, that is where we collect all the threats. Uh, so I think, and, and, and my take on this is very, very simple. I mean, again, I, I am not uh, an Arctic uh, scientist. I'm a com I come from a political science background. So connectivity, that is where we must focus. And that is where, you know, I hope Iceland can come in and coordinate maybe some of the icebreakers and the research results that you collect from. And I was very impressed also, if I may add a lesson from this morning, about the cable that they are planning from, from, uh, through the, uh, from Japan 
uh, up to Norway and Finland with all the measurement equipment on. This is a new way to study. And again, this needs to be collected into the beehive, which we all have access to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Um, we are particularly grateful from uh, an IASC perspective uh, for Iceland's support for the Secretariat of, of IASC, which uh, is hosted in, at the university in Akureyri. So uh, not only is Iceland itself a whole Arctic research infrastructure, but you very kindly support uh, the Secretariat for IASC. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, We'll go on to our next speaker, uh, Hongchul Shin, who is the Vice President of the Korea Polar Research Institute. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity at the long-awaited Japan Forum. It's my pleasure. Now, I have four points. First, planning documents. It'll make greater sense to have our next Arctic science planning document, ICA-4, more rich and strengthened with its guiding elements. Saying what remains to be done is important, yet what matters even more is to pencil down how, when, and where we should be doing it. Now, secondly, jointly done big science. Now, importance of collecting actively conceived and jointly executed large-scale field surveys cannot be overemphasized. And good time to, to have such campaigns will come around in 10 years' time, IPY 2023. Now, timeline-wise, ICA-4 is due 2025, and then um, we will have more strengthened research capacity. For example, Japan will have a new ice vessel. As a matter of fact, Korea will be ready to a polar class three newly built ice breaking research vessel, the second in its fleet into more dedicated Arctic use around that time. Then there come a time of joint design and funding appeal about four to five years. Then we go together to the field around IPY time. But devils are in the details so that resource deployment and investment made over such a short period of time will require joint design and synchronization of funding cycles. So that will remain as a homework. Thirdly, new technology. My new technology is not just about gadget and toy and drone stuff. It's about something more new and digital. Now, massive research infrastructure is still very important. Nonetheless, um, we have entered a time of chat GPT. Enhanced CI's forecast capacity, despite limited data using artificial intelligence, we have already heard about this. So now it's time to mix large infrastructure and new technology. Fourth, um, it's about science and legal instruments and policy initiatives. Now we will have more and more legal instruments and policy initiatives that issue or create mandate to science. Now there will come good science, but then we should be able to assemble, consolidate, and integrate those findings and outcomes to a greater use. For this to happen, we will need some type of platform and stage. Without having to reinvent, reinvent the wheel, perhaps we can make good use of existing, for example, Arctic Science Summit Week, or Arctic Observing Summit, or Arctic Science Ministerial, whatever but we need to talk in order to better use our science. That's where I stop, thank you. Thank you, Hong Chul, thank you. Uh, and we'll move on to our fifth speaker, uh, who is Larry Hinsman. Uh, Larry Hinsman uh, is the Executive Director of the Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee, uh, professor at University of Alaska Fairbanks, uh, and is my predecessor as the president of IASC. Larry, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Dear colleagues, it's. Uh 
it's an honor to be here today. It's uh, wonderful to see all our old friends and gather together and, and address these really important challenges. So our respective nations, researchers and indigenous knowledge holders all have much to offer to each other through collaborations, co-productions and partnerships. Co-productions, collaborations and partnerships all advance our understanding of the Arctic region and the Arctic system. Our researchers bring their unique expertise and access to their research platforms, a history of observations and cumulative data, and most importantly, their perspectives on how to conceive and conduct investigations. When such expertise and capabilities are brought together in the spirit of open science, we can achieve great things. Collaborations among Arctic researchers had led to better understanding of the role of the Arctic in global climate dynamics, and this is particularly important in understanding extremes in weather, trajectories of storm movements, and probably probability of fire danger. Permafrost degradation and wildfires are already releasing substantial amounts of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. Arctic research has helped our nations understand and prepare for and adapt to a changing climate and the physical environment. The U.S. Arctic Research Plan is developed around the concept of collaborations across disciplines and knowledge systems. This plan targets high-level complex challenges that require the contributions of researchers from many disciplines and knowledge systems. Over the past five or six decades, Arctic researchers have primarily focused upon disciplinary questions that could be resolved by individuals or small teams. The 2022 through 2026 Arctic Research Plan takes on challenges that must be approached through collaboration and co-production and convergent research. So we're, we're moving from the disciplinary issues that we've worked on for so many years to the more sophisticated, complex issues that really require the contributions of many disciplines and many teams working together. The changing climate in the Arctic impacts energy, water and food security, community health and resilience, natural resource development, infrastructure, commercial activities, ecosystem services, and hazard mitigation. This interdisciplinary plan, plan positions the Arctic research community to better understand and effectively respond to the effects of climate change in the Arctic and beyond. In the past, our researchers were advancing our collective understanding of sea ice and permafrost and ecosystem dynamics, and that work was critically important to advance the science to the level where we are today. And now we're in the position, we have the capability to pull all those, all that understanding, all that expertise together to take on these more, more sophisticated challenges. We're now able to build multidisciplinary teams where individuals contribute their expertise, their data, their research platforms, or other resources. And through these collective partnerships, we are able to resolve complex problems that individual investigators or single disciplinary teams could never consider. So addressing challenges of such magnitude must be approached through co-production of, of knowledge and close working relationships with indigenous peoples of the Arctic. These solutions must also be rooted in community decisions and with local participation. As our societal challenges become more complex, our scientific investigations must likewise become more comprehensive, more collective, and more co-produced. Several of our Colleagues have mentioned the importance of, of ICARP, and I just want to add a little bit to that. I, but I just want to talk about the value of, of the ICARP, the International Conference on Arctic Research Planning, which is going to be, the next one is in 2025 in Boulder, Colorado. So these research meetings, planning meetings, are held once every 10 years to frame the research needs for the coming decade. So it's important to note that the third ICARP was held he here in Japan, in Toyama, in, t in 2015. Dr. Enomoto and Dr. Yamanuchi were, were leads in that and did a wonderful job. And the, they really set the trajectory for the studies on the role of the Arctic in the global system and the prediction of future climate dynamics and ecosystem responses. And in the last decade, we've made tremendous, tremendous progress in those areas. And they also identified that improved understanding of the vulnerability and resilience of Arctic environments and societies was a priority. But I'm sorry to say we still have a lot of work to do in that area. So these, these meetings are tremendously important for us to allow, to identify those priorities and build the, the comprehensive teams that we need to take them on. And so I really sincerely hope that we get good participation in the ARCARP, and I certainly plan to be there. So um, 
with that, I guess one other thing too, I do, I do want to encourage everyone to start thinking about the fifth international poll year, which will be held in 2032 and 2033. So this is a great opportunity for our nations to consider and develop the jointly funded international programs that require engagement and investment of many researchers and many funding agencies across nations. So with that, I will thank you and pass the microphone. Larry, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll go on to our final speaker now, uh, Zhang Yang, who is the Vice President of the Shanghai Institute for International Studies in China. Zhang, thank you. Uh, it's my great uh, privilege to be given the opportunity to join this important uh, session. Uh, the speakers, including chairs, are the leading scientists and the leading designer of the International Science Plan on the Arctic in the future. We know that the EASC and uh, start to think about the new IPY, uh, ICAP4, uh, I think that's uh, put a, a, a new uh, plan and a new uh, priority for our future. The 2032 uh, uh, IPY will be under intensive implementation and or practice on the international level. Uh, and during the ICAP 4, uh, possibly, that will uh, come along with the new industrial revolution that we should pay attention to. And also the, the new priority, a new goal, and uh, a new roadmap that should be important. Uh, now we see about the uh, goal-based governance. As for the international science cooperation, as the governance goal-based science cooperation for the future. Uh, I want to make uh, three points here and uh, some uh, suggestions. The first one to, uh, to upgrade geographically the systematicness and the comprehensiveness for the Arctic science uh, research and also at the same time provide the uh, convenient access accessibility to the international cooperation. Uh, if we uh, check the scientific paper in the e-library about Arctic, then we can find mo a large proportion of the paper is about uh, the fact and the data get from New Olson. Uh, of course, New Olson is very important, but the data and the facts uh, in New from New Olson could not represent all the science importance. There must be other work sites that uh, have uh, uh, of uh, science importance. So one of the jobs that's the open, uh, uh, that's the uh, open the map or dot, make dot on that map or by uh, the working group or the I ask uh, on about based on the geographically importance in sense of science, in sense of monitoring, based on the need of different uh, science uh, fields. After that, at that very moment, forget about the sovereign EEZ and just for the, of the science importance. And then after that, maybe we think about the, the sovereign issue. So that uh, maybe in other platform, we'll, uh, maybe the uh, Arctic uh, Science uh, Ministry uh, Conference that we do help to reach agreement at all arrangement providing convenience, accessibility to international scientists to, of course, all the projects should be carried on, respect the sovereign and should be par par transparent and be verified. The second point I want to make that efficient allocation of the limited resources. We know that uh, uh, the data and the achievement in the Arctic is very expensive. You only can go there of few months in summer, and also you need uh, the icebreaker, the research vessel, that's very expensive. But we can find that some repetition of some project apply, applying for that uh, project on same issue, on same location, between different university and institutes. Facing the rapidly changing climate environment, we only have a few research vessels available working in Arctic. We only have a few months working time each year. So some reputation is kind of waste. So efficient allocation of limited resource 
the research resource is very important. The last point I want to make is that to upgrade assimilation level and integration level of uh, monitoring data. Of uh, the previous data about Arctic Ocean, whether ice, glacier, uh, permafrost, uh, spatially, tem tempor temporarily fragmented. So due to different pro the pro approach, different pro the period of time, the measurement standards and equipment and different source of the data getting, uh, the shore-based, ship-based, ice-based, air and outer space-based, and the water measurement. So one of the big jobs, a big uh, project for international science community is to assimilate, integrate the data, the, even the knowledge, combining with the dynamic models, supercomputers, to reflect, to predict the overall and a real Arctic system in future. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you to all our speakers for uh, giving us a sense of the scale and depth uh, of this issue of kind of looking forward to some of the opportunities, but also not being afraid to think about what some of the challenges might be as well. So we've got 13 and a half minutes left on our clock, and I want us to maximize that, that time. Um, so I think we'll think about some questions from the audience, if that's okay, to give you a chance to to ask uh, our esteemed panel here uh, whatever questions you would you would like. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Jon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jon Fuglestad, the Research Council of Norway. Uh, very interesting discussions, and uh, the collaboration of uh, future Arctic science is, is very important, and it's been more or less an overarching uh, theme for, for many of the sessions here. Um, we have heard We'll see all of the countries have uh, Arctic strategies, they have Arctic policies, they have their national priorities in science, and especially then uh, national calls for how to fund we'll see, national research. Um, so my question to you um, is how do we actually, or do you have any thoughts about how do we align the national priorities compared to improved international collaboration in Arctic research. Maybe the funding issue especially is, uh, is important. Um, a key word maybe is the Arctic Science Funders Forum. Is that someone, something we can use better? But anyway, how do we align national priorities with international collaboration? Thank you very much. That's a, that's a really hot topic. So aligning national priorities with international cooperation, possibly also with the Arctic Science Funders Forum. Katarina, would you like to go first, and then Larry, perhaps? Uh, this is an extremely important uh, question. Uh, and uh, at the Swedish Polar Research... Oh, sorry, should I? Yeah, yeah the Secretariat. We have uh, started a process that we call the Polar Research Process, which actually... Uh, works in seven steps. In the first step, we have a bottom-up process to, uh, and a call for thematic, for themes, thematic areas. And this is open for the Swedish scientific community in collaboration with the international community. Uh, and in this way, we aim to plan the research in a very early stage so that there will be time to contact all the, or contact or be contacted by the various research foundations in different countries in order to align different call for application processes and try to connect the founding mechanisms in, in different uh, um, countries. Uh, the process is also open for, it's a multidisciplinary process in the align what Larry said. So it's not a disciplinary, it's multidisciplinary. The themes should be very wide and they are very often inspired by the IASC initiatives and uh, SCAR initi initiatives and so on. And then it works in seven steps. In the end, we have a, a policy to uh, research synthesis report. And um, the projects that we launch within the themes, they are both for field-going uh, scientists, 
and for scientists that are um, in, in front of the computer, so to speak, uh, modelers and from very many different disciplines. So this is an attempt. The, the short answer is go out very early and um, show your plans, <laughs> say that this is what we would like to do. We cannot do it alone, but we would like to do it with the international scientific community. And I, I have found that it has worked uh, quite Thank good. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Uh, Larry, did you want to come on on this? Sure, I'll be brief. The U.S. Arctic Research Plan has four priorities, and they're, they're, you won't be surprised that they are actually very common, very uh, common across many nations, and that was because we actually used all of your strategies to build this, uh, this Arctic Research Plan, and they are uh, community health and resilience is the first, um, Arctic system interactions is the second, economies and livelihoods is the third, and risk management and hazard mitigation is the fourth. And so those are, are obviously issues that we're all concerned about. And they're obviously issues that all of our nations and many of our researchers can contribute to. And so there is a, a very plausible method to work forward, work together to move these, these issues forward. And I think that's where Arctic science needs help right now, and that's what we can deliver. Thank you. Uh, and Jon, you mentioned the Arctic Science Funders Forum. Um, this is an organization uh, that was established after the last Arctic Science Ministerial meeting. Uh, it has established terms of reference. It's met informally on a number of occasions, uh, and formally as well. Uh, and it, but it, unfortunately, it's in abeyance at the moment. But I very much hope, from an IASC perspective, uh, and I think others do too, that we'll see the Arctic Science Funders Forum re-establish itself uh, and continue its work, because it is a fantastic opportunity to bring together like-minded countries to on, on bilateral or multilateral efforts. It doesn't mean that we're going to create a, an enormous bucket of money that we all tip money into, and then we drag it all out, but I think it's, a, it's something that we should see re-established and, and re-energized. So we have some more time. Uh, Rasmus, you had your hand up, uh, and then a colleague in the back. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Rasmus Bertelsen from the Arctic University of Norway and Akureyri University in Iceland. Um, the uh, not elephant in the room, but the bear in the room is, of course, Russia. And I think August uh, 3rd, that's probably underestimating the Russian share of the Arctic. So my question is very simple. I mean, where is Russian Arctic science in everything you are talking about? I'm mostly familiar with European positions myself, so I'd be particularly interested in the Asian and American positions. But where is Russian sci Arctic science in all of what you're talking about? Thank you. Thank you, Rasmus. That's, a, that's a, an extremely important issue. Thank you for raising the, the question. It, perhaps if I could just say something from an IASC perspective first. So IASC is a, a non-governmental, non-political organization of 24 countries. Uh, of course, Russia was a founding member of IASC. Uh, Russia is fully able to participate in our council meetings and in our working group meetings, uh, and we look forward to them uh, being able to do so. Um, would other colleagues uh, like to uh, ad address this issue? Um, any more to say? So may, maybe many countries facing this problem, and this is the case of Japan. So we, uh, the previous ACT program, uh, data from Russia is a big issue, and we uh, made many effort to establish the connection. And but in this situation, that uh, connection is uh, stopped. So, uh, and but we are trying to individual uh, contact. And they have our instrument. So Russian scientists have instrument. They seem to be keeping. Uh, keeping ob keep observing and taking data, but the country to country uh, restriction data transfer is not uh, so allowed. But they are keeping, and we are expecting the future uh, connection of the both countries' data. And uh, at least uh, the separately, but people are doing. Thank you, Enemoto san. Uh, would other colleagues like to address this issue? Sure, I can be very brief, and I can just say that the US government has um, ceased government-to-government -government relationships with, with uh, Russia, including f following the Russian invasion of Ukraine, including scientific relationships. And um, we will not expect to go back to business as usual until the, uh, the Ukraine war has ended. And so that's, uh, that is where the US position is. Many thanks, Larry. I, I will perhaps add something just very briefly from, a, from a, an IASC perspective. Um, in that we are very keen to see uh, all countries uh, able to contribute to the ICARP process. 
uh, and all countries are able to con contribute to the international polar year, the fifth international polar year. We have had international polar years in the past at some of the most difficult times in the 20th century, uh, and uh, it is my aspiration uh, for all countries to be able to contribute uh, as they can to that, to that process as, a, as appropriate. Um, we have four minutes left, so definitely one time for one more question. Uh, yes, at the back. Thank you, Henry. My name is Volker Rachold. I'm the head of the German Arctic Office at the Alfred Wegener Institute. And I want to mention two other things that I believe are possibly also important in terms of the connection to, let's say, more, more the politics. One, of course, is the Arctic Science Ministerial process. Uh, that also comes up with priorities, the, way, the same way that ICARP does it, different mechanism and different processes. But at the end, if you compare the two documents, you would see that the main recommendations or the main priorities are basically the same, actually. And the other one, of course, is the um, agreement on enhancing science cooperation that the Arctic Council initiated, and that was signed a few years ago. Uh, so my question for you would be, and of course this has also something to do with uh, how it will continue in terms of Russian participation, but how would you see the link between what you are doing in science uh, connected to the Arctic Science Ministerial and then, of course, also the science cooperation agreement of the Arctic Council? Because I would see that these things are somehow connected. Thank you. Many thanks, Volker. Um, would anyone like to take that question? Well, perhaps I can attempt it then. So um, as an international organization, uh, IASC is an observer to the Arctic Council. Uh, and we're very pleased to have participated in the Arctic Science Ministerial process uh, and to have uh, a voice there and to have helped them organize um, their events and their, and their consultations uh, over that period. So I hope that connection will, will continue into the, into the future. Um, we have just about time for another question, if anyone has one. Otherwise, I'll thank our speakers. I, I just would like to make an observation that aligning national strategy is quite important. But when you look at national strategies, you can clearly see we have a lot in common. There may be some differences where you want to do it, but if you can make good use of interdisciplinarity, not necessarily multidisciplinarity, and as a pan-Arctic perspective, then it can surely unite us. As Katrina said, we may need some time to show our plan and think together and plan together. I think that may be more important. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we'll bring our session to a close. Thank you to all our panelists for their contributions, uh, for addressing the challenges, frankly, but also your optimism. Uh, this is an area where there is so much uh, international collaboration that's happening, where there's so much potential for, for even more. Uh, so I'm very optimistic, and I think you should be too, but we will get through all this uh, together uh, and in a positive direction. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to continuing these kind of discussions at, uh, if we can, the Arctic Circle Assembly in Reykjavik uh, in October, uh, and then in a year's time at the Arctic Science Summit Week in Edinburgh, to which you're all very welcome. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for being here. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you.